Namaste. Thank you for joining me for this class. Please have your mat and your bolster ready and let's begin. Find a comfortable seat. Sit on your bolster if you've got one. Shoulders down and back, spine nice and tall. Close the eyes. Allow the breath to become deeper and deeper. Allow it to transport you to the right here, right now. Bring your hands together and create some friction between them. Rubbing them together, activating them. Activating the heart chakra. Rubbing them together however you'd like. When you're ready, coming to stillness with the hands of Namaskar in front of the heart. Beginning the class with three ohms. Inhale deeply. Bringing the hands down to the legs, eyes remaining closed. Today our focus is on our hips. Specifically the hips provide for us the flow of life, how we move through life. stop the flow of life? Do we allow life to flow to us? Are we constantly searching for balance instead of realizing that no matter what, there is a flow already happening consistently? For many people, balance, this idea of perfect balance is an illusion. We must understand that balance always going to be this ebb and flow. Sometimes you'll feel really high, sometimes you'll feel really low. And that is just a part of life. So flowing through that, recognizing that in this human experience we have, there is that ebb and flow of good and bad, anger, sadness, happiness, joy. From depression to bliss. We've all had moments where it feels unbearable, it feels difficult, but you can always rely on a higher power to bring you through it, to carry you through to the other side. Your heart always knows the way. carry you in that direction. When you're ready, slowly open the eyes and come into the space.
We're going to start with a Kriya. It's a really fun Kriya. Most people who do it are a little scared at first, but once you go full all into it, you'll find that it's very liberating. Okay? So I encourage you to dive in and just go for it. Okay. So keeping our hands on our knees, we're going to be activating a part of the body called Lula Banda. Lula Banda. What it basically is, is the lock of our pelvic muscles, the ones that contract to stop the flow of urine. Okay? So as we contract it, we're going to say a mantra, but just try contracting it right now. Contract, relax. 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 Beautiful. As we do that, our eyes are going to be closed. Our gaze is focused at our third eye with our eyes closed. And we're going to say the mantra, Alak Niranjan. Alak Niranjan. Alak Niranjan. Alak Niranjan. Okay? A-L-A-K-N-I-R-A-N-J-A-N. Alak Niranjan. So when we say Alak, we lock the Mula Bandha. When we say Niranjan, we relax it. Okay? Eyes closed, gazing at the third eye. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. As we say Alak, we say it with conviction. As the words Alak Niranjan mean wake up true self. So eyes closed, hands on the knees, shoulders down and back, spine nice and tall, gazing at the third eye with the eyes closed. Inhale. Alak Niranjan. 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 Okay? So now I'd like you to do it with me if you weren't already. So just close your eyes, sit nice and tall, hands on your knees, shoulders down and back, opening up the body, getting ready, inhaling deeply, and let's begin. Alak Niranjan, 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 Alak Niranjan. Alak Niranjan, 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 Alak Niranjan. Alak Niranjan, 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 Alak Niranjan. Inhale deeply. Hold the energy at the top, gaze at the third eye, lock the Mula Bandha. Slowly exhale. When you're ready, open up your eyes and come into the space. That was a little strange for you. You aren't alone. Almost everyone says it's very strange for them at first. But I want you to know if you keep doing that, you will definitely wake up your true self. You'll definitely begin to feel some energies tingling and begin to feel that moving throughout your spine, throughout your body. 
It's specifically good for the hips as the hips are highly tailored by the pelvic muscles, especially those very internal ones that hold our, our uh, reproductive organs. Okay, slowly move your bolster. Come to a seat. Bring your feet together for butterfly. Interlace your hands around your feet if you can. Slowly bring your shoulders down and back. Flutter your knees. to that inner leg, often very, very tight for most of us. Mine's feeling extra tight today, probably from one of the classes I did yesterday. So when we come to stillness, press your knees down into the mat, bring your shoulders down and back, just lengthen the spine up. Take a breath. at the top of your mat in mountain pose. Siddhasana. Starting with our sun salutations. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, deep in on top of the toes. Inhale, Anjaniyasana. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to the plank. Inhale at the top of your plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale here. Exhale, the pelvis down. Inhale to cobra. Exhale, hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Take a breath. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, right knee down. Untuck the toes. Inhale. Anjaniyasana. Exhale, stay there. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands, tuck the toes. Step forward into fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Beautiful. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step back in the plank. Inhale at the top of your plank. Exhale, flow. Flow through your vinyasa all the way to downward dog. Once you get there, pedal it out. Beautiful. Come to stillness. Take a breath. Inhale, the right leg up. Allow the hip to open. Opening it right up. Bring your hips in a circle. Circulating that knee. Exhale, bring it forward. Plant the foot between the hands. Slowly rise up. Runner's lunge. Take a breath. Exhale the right left hand down. And open up the right hand. But allow your hip to open up with it if you can. So it's not really in alignment. It's kind of out of alignment, but it's opening up your hip a bit more. Breathe. 
slowly come down. Plant the hands. Step back and come straight to downward dog. Take a breath. Inhale the left foot up. Open it up. Make some circles with that knee. Take a breath. You should take three. Coming into pigeon pose. Not everyone can do pigeon pose. Not everyone can go deep. Know your limits. Inhale the right foot up. Exhale, bring it forward. Bring the outside edge of your leg parallel with the edge of the mat and drop the knee. You might not be exactly parallel, that's okay. Just know where you are. Meet yourself where you are. And breathe. Stay nice and tall first. Spine elongating. come down to your elbows and keep breathing. This pose is really good to sit in for a long period of time. be hard. The goal is to relax fully into the pose. Slowly. up to your hands, tuck the back toe, and push up, open up the hip again, and bring it down to downward dog. This really changes the flexibility of your hip when you practice it over time. Take a few breaths. Whatever variation of the pose feels good to you. And breathing. Slowly. 
slowly coming down onto your elbows. As we breathe, we send energy to the parts of our body that need it most. And you can usually feel where that is. So try to breathe into those areas. Slowly come back up to your hands if you're not there yet. Slowly come out of the pose, push into your hands, bring the hip open, come back down into downward dog. Take a breath. When you're ready, slowly come down to your knees. Once you've found your way to your knees, turn your body to the long edge of your mat. We're going to come into frog pose. This is another more challenging pose. It's not challenging in the sense that it, it um, requires muscular effort. It's challenging in the sense that it's not the easiest to get into. So be patient with yourself and only go to, to your own limits. If you feel like you cannot do this pose, just come into child's pose and breathe, okay? So bringing the knees nice and wide, the um, lower leg is parallel with each other, okay? I'm going to actually angle myself slightly so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Your feet are pointing outwards and you come down onto your elbows. So this is frog pose. It might hurt the inside of your knees, but as you do it over time, it gets easier. Once you're in frog pose, you just breathe. If you feel like it's not challenging enough or it's a little too challenging, you can always walk your knee a little higher for less challenging. For more challenging, you walk it out farther. So just stay in this pose and breathe. Slowly bring yourself out of it. Walk your knees back together. Just take a seat for a moment. It's not an easy pose. If you feel like that was really difficult, that's okay. Slowly come on to your back. Straighten the legs out and lower yourself down. Bringing the knees up close to the butt. Just taking your knees and swaying them from side to side. Allowing the hips to relax. Now, after pigeon pose and frog pose, some people might feel a little bit of tenderness in their lower back. It's completely normal. 
is it's moving a muscle that is attached to your lower back, from your lower back to your leg, especially in pigeon pose. It's called the psoas major muscle. So if you feel tenderness in your lower back, it's completely normal. Don't panic. It's something I experience all the time. If you are feeling that, bring your knees into your chest, hug them close, and just rock side to side. circles, switch directions, and slowly bring your feet down. If your back still feels a little tender, you can keep your feet here. If not, you can stretch them out as we prepare for Shavasana. Placing your hands on your hips, giving them some love. Taking a moment and thanking your hips for all the hard work they do. They carry you through so much. They help you flow through all the good times and the difficult ones. Rest your body, especially your shoulders, your neck, your jaw, your tongue, your eyes, and your brow. Relax into the mat and enjoy Shavasana. Slowly begin to wake the body back up, wiggling the fingers and toes, moving the ankles and wrists, bending the elbows and the knees, moving the hips and the shoulders, swaying your head side to side, 
flexing and extending the spine. Whatever way you feel you need to. Coming up to a seat. Hands in Namaskar at the heart. Closing the eyes. Cultivate gratitude for your practice, for your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your energy, as well as the creator. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste.